What's up, Infected, and welcome to the quarantine. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a game that's going to be coming to Kickstarter soon by the name of Ironclad. Now I do have to mention in this video, uh, everything you see here is a prototype copy of the game. And if you like what you see here, uh, I will provide, once it's available, a link down in the description that will take you over to the Kickstarter page. And it will provide way more information than I could possibly cover in this video. So what is Ironclad? Well, Ironclad is a game where one to three players are commanding a the battleship that is the Ironclad. And it's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure space story, basically, where you're taking control of the Ironclad and you're going through a campaign or a series of campaign missions, and depending on your choices from the previous mission, they affect the, you know, the rest of the game. And you gain and lose uh, influence, you gain money, you have to pay your crew, you know, repair, man manage repairs, manage damage, manage a bunch of different things. Uh, so, let's just head over to the overview. Alright, now this is going to be a game of ironclad set up ready to go. Now, there's a couple things I need to make note, and I already said earlier, everything you see here is prototype copy of this game. Uh, so the components are, you know, in this preview, are, you know, foam core with stuff, uh, with stickers on them, essentially. Uh, the components, of course, in the Kickstarter will be much better quality. Uh, the other thing I need to mention is this isn't an actual scenario. I just kind of threw pieces together just so you got an idea of how the game would play. Because you're going to have a campaign book. And the campaign book is going to show you, depending on what campaign and what mission you're on, it's going to show you, as you see here, how to set up the map, any briefings you have, any special rules, so on and so forth. So the way the game works is you have three different sections. You have the hangar, you have the bridge, and you have the weapons bay. And then you have your token here that is the ironclad, and your mission setup is going to tell you where you're going to set it up, and what intel tokens you're going to use, and how you're going to distribute them on the board, and so on and so forth. And then you're going to set up the player board here, and this is the actual ironclad itself. And as you see down here, if uh, you know each one of these, this is one damage marker. And then, uh, let's see, we have the bridge up here. So if the bridge got damaged once, you'd put a damage marker like that. But if it got damaged twice, you're going to put this here and put this on the number two. Because now you're getting a penalty, as you see here, uh, which you may not be able to see. It shows a minus one to your evasion rolls. And then as it gets, you know, the bridge gets more and more damaged, you know, the more and more penalties that you're getting for that damage. So you have uh, set up the board as you see here. You have your action point markers, you have your uh, sh your ships that you have loaded into your hangar bay, and you have your crew. And again, the campaign book, depending on which campaign you're playing and everything, is going to tell you how you're going to set everything up, and what crew you have access to, and so on and so forth. Any special rules with over here. Now one of the cool things about this game is, whatever happens to your ship, to the ironclad, is persistent. So as you see here, uh, which hopefully it shows up on the uh, on screen, as you see, you cr track your progress. So I have influence here on different uh, different factions, who has gotten promotions, people that I've gotten, the status of my ship. You know, after of course docking and repairing and using credits and whatnot, um, and then what decisions I've made on which uh, branches of the campaign. Now. My prototype copy only has the first three missions of one of the campaigns. And from what I understand, there's going to be multiple campaigns and there's, you know, multiple uh, endings or multiple, um, m more missions for each campaign. Uh, but how is the game actually going to play? So it's, it's fairly simple. So what you're going to do is once you have everything set up and you've paid your crew because the, the uh, campaign book is going to tell you, for example, you start out with 50 credits. First and foremost, you have to pay for your crew. So when you look at a card here, this number up here in the corner is how much, how many credits this crew member is going to need in order to man your ship. So this is going to take three. She takes two, two, three, 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 so on and so forth. So you're paying for that first and foremost. Uh, and then you get a couple free, of course, depending on the scenario or the uh, campaign, you get a couple free fighters that are launched in your, or that are lodged in your hangar bay. So the game is played 
actually pretty simply. You're going to read through any story blurbs that tell you what your mission is, and you're the campaign that I've played, you're always given two choices at least. You know, hey, go get this and bring it back to me. And then somebody inter interrupts and goes, actually, if you bring it back to me, you'll get this. And depending on which option you choose is how you're going to proceed with the game and whose influence you're going to get, and whose influence you're going to lose, which could affect later games. And, but the actual gameplay is very simple. You only have a handful of actions you're going to take. So once you've figured out what your mission is and you know, you know, for example, maybe you got to get to the crossroads, which I put here in the middle. You have action points here, and your action points are based on morale and crew. So your crew, being at seven, you see a little symbol below here, it shows the action point symbol in two. So you get two action points just because you have plenty of crew to be able to man your ship. However, your morale, if it starts off at four, you don't get anything else. But if I had it all the way up to seven, I would have three action point markers for each turn. So what you're going to do on your turn is you will flip over one of your action points and you're going to do a variety of different actions. Now the actions you can take, you can only really do three actions. You can recon, which a recon would be if the ironclad is here. Any intel token that's face down, you're going to be able to look at to be able to have an idea of, okay, what is this going to do? So this says signals detected. So what you're going to do is depending on the intel tokens, you may have to refer to the campaign because there may be special things. But if not, you're going to look through these double-sided cards that tells you what each one of these things do. So for example, signals detected shows here and it says that you have to con uh, consult the scenario and counter table and resolve the space combat. So victory, you get plus one uh, morale, and you may lose two morale to skip this encounter, so you basically run away. And that's what all of these are going to do. You're going to read the card, and it's going to tell you what you need to do. For example, here, exhaust up to three heroes, choose either the wrenches or the gears, which you know, yellow or green, which are the stats that you see here on your crew members. And you know, engineers get plus one, in, and uh, specialists get plus one green, and you're gonna roll. So the way these tests work is, if I have to say test uh, the green gears, and I choose, in this example, I choose June. So I'm gonna roll, I choose to exhaust her, you're gonna put a little exhaust token on it, and you're gonna roll the die. So I rolled a two, plus two, so I rolled a four. So you're gonna consult whatever chart you're rolling on to see what you, uh, what you chose here. So in this case, I can exhaust multiple crew members and try to you know, be able to pass this because you're assigning that crew to that task. And the more crew or the better the crew, the more likely they are to succeed. But more on all of that later. Uh, the other action you can do is you can move. So you're going to take the ironclad and you're going to move into a space. So in this case, if I move to the uh, geometric storm, you're going to take the intel token and set it off to the side for just a moment. And then you're going to look at the uh, in the uh, environment card here. So you're going to look for a geomagnetic, geomagnetic storm. So this says you're going to take two damage that can be stopped by uh, environmental shields and then minus one to B. So what that means is the bridge is just going to take a damage. Then you're gonna roll the D6 two times. So I rolled a four, you're gonna control consult the damage chart. So I rolled a four, that's one damage to the hangar. And then I roll it again, and I rolled another four, so that is another damage to the hangar. So the hangar gets the damage uh, upgrade here, and then it goes on to the two. So now I can only deploy one fighter, which will make a little bit more sense because I get minus one fighter and mech, which can be a big problem. Once you've resolved whatever the environmental effect is, you're gonna flip over an intel token. So as you see here, you know, we've already figured out what this is, but signals detected, that's when you're going to look at these cards and resolve it. And then that was my first action. The last thing I can do, because in this case, you know, we, we looked at the thing and then we moved, 
And then the last thing that you can do is you can rest. So throughout the course of the game, you're going to be putting these exhaust tokens on your crew members. If a crew member ever gets a second exhaust token, they become wounded, which means they can no longer take actions. And it also becomes more expensive because you can rest and remove exhaustion tokens off of somebody. However, in order to remove this, you have to heal that character, which generally can be done on planets and space stations, so it's a little harder to get rid of those. So when you rest, it allows you to take two exhaustion tokens off of characters. So if I had, you know, say June and Olivia here exhausted, I'd remove these and that would be my third action. Then after you've performed all your actions, you're going to move the turn track up and that's how a turn goes. Now there's a couple additional things here. So you have abilities in all of your characters. So for example, Olivia, you can exhaust Olivia and then you can reroll any die, but you have to keep the second result. So that is really good. And you have some characters, for example, June, uh, you can exhaust June and spend one of your uh, salvage if you have it. And then you can just avoid a damage, which is really good. And they all have abilities, but most of those abilities require you to exhaust that character, which could put it in, put you in a bit of a pickle, depending on the situation you wind up finding yourself in. Which leads me to combat. So as you see here, you have a huge deck of large cards here of different types of encounters that you may find yourself coming across in the game. Uh, so for example, this one. This could be a bad guy that you wind up having to face off against, uh, which has all of their stats here, their accuracy, how much damage they do if they hit, uh, their, how much they, uh, their dodge, their hull, their shields, as you see here, and then any special rules to their tactics, how they attack, stuff like that. Uh, so that this here could wind up being paired with, I don't know, uh, a Corvette or something, or maybe a, a mech coming to fight you, or, or all kinds of things. So you may have to encounter multiple cards of these at once, depending on the scenario and depending on the courses of actions that you've taken throughout the game. And that, in a nutshell, is how you play Ironclad. Now, Ironclad is going to appeal to a wide variety of people. You know, if you like adventure games, you like space theme games, you like, you know, 90s anime style uh, artwork, uh, and, you know, similar to things like uh, Heavy Metal 2000, um, Akira, for example, uh, Robotech, you know, a lot of the, the 80s and 90s anime, you know, the artwork just screams that flavor. And the game's narrative is really well done. You're always prevent, presented with this is your mission or this is your mission. And so you're given a choice and that choice is going to hurt your influence with one faction and help your influence with another. And then that's gonna wind up affecting you later because maybe later you have to dock at maybe somebody's uh, base that you aren't entirely friendly with anymore. So now you don't get to do things there or maybe you can't even dock there. And so you wind up having you wind up having lots of decisions that you have to make that wind up staying with you. And then on top of that, the rewards do you get? Uh, you know, do you side with this faction because you get this really cool fighter, or do you side with this because you know you like the faction, or maybe you get a, a crew member from this? So you okay, which one do you want? And there's there's winds up being a lot going on for such a simple, straightforward game. And I know in that overview, because I you know, kind of went over a lot of things there, it sounds probably pretty complicated, but it's really not. You, it boils down to you're doing one of three things a turn. That's it, you got three actions, and you can do the same action more than once. So maybe you scan the sector and then move into it, and then move again and hope for the best. You know, if you have those three, if you have three action points, or maybe the ironclad gets damaged and now you only have one, what are you going to do? Do you rest that turn because half your crew's exhausted, or do you push forward and hope for the best? And that's where this game is, that a lot of people are going to like this game because it's super simple, you're going on an adventure, you're telling a story. Remember that time Gabriel, you know, manned the, manned the ship and dodged those missiles? And you know, you, do you remember when, uh, what's her name, June, you know, was in the, the fighter and blew up the capital ship, but then he immediately wound up getting taken down and had to rush to the, uh, you know, to med bay. And, and so you have all of these things going on and it tells such an awesome narrative. And then on top of everything, uh, for people who are, who really like RPGs, you, 
wind up having your campaign tracker here to be able to keep track of you know how many uh, what crew you have who's been promoted how many credits you have left over what state the ship was left in if there's damage that you're carrying over maybe you couldn't afford to uh, repair it what your influence is with the different factions um, any special gear you get the choices you made and so on and so forth there's there's just so much going on in it but it's such a simple game to actually learn and play and it is very enjoyable. If you like action adventure games and you like puzzle style games and space themed 80s and 90s anime art style, uh, this game is definitely going to appeal to you. And then on top of that, even playing through the same campaign, the map layouts are the same, but all of these intel tokens, uh, they are always going to be positioned totally different. So maybe you play through this game again with some buddies or something and, you know, now you're encountering these intel tokens totally different. So maybe a ship jumps out of warp because of the uh, the signal boot or the um, signature detected. So now you have to deal with that. You didn't deal with it last time. That gives this game a lot of replayability. And then the fact that it plays up to three players, each player just controls one of these stations. So maybe you know you have one person that's in charge of the hangar bay, one player that's in charge of the bridge crew, one player that's in charge of the weapons crew. So it winds up sparking up a lot of debate on when you're trying to make these decisions. You know, do you use just the guy in the helm or in the bridge? Maybe you know use one of his guys to decrease the maneuverability or the weapon power of the of the shields to not get damage. But then that affects the dude on weapons. So now he's like, well, wait a minute, but if we if we can take out these fighters, we're going to sustain less damage. Or, you know, this, so there's, there's just a lot going on in the game, but it plays so simply. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you'll consider backing the project, and I'll see you guys next time in the quarry.